Hi there, welcome to the Little Eden Podcast. This is DJ and Cindy. I'd like to thank you for joining us this evening. If you're just joining us for the first time, hit that subscribe button and it helps if you hit that like button and you can leave a comment down below. We had such a great day today, Cindy, didn't we? We did. We've been, uh, it's not the day I would have chosen, but we spent most of our time helping somebody else. So, a it family was, member. It was a good day. We got to go look at some, we got to go look at a car and do some driving around. Yeah, that didn't end well. Yeah, well we got to talk and sing. And Yeah, we drove an hour out and kind of find out this truck had a lot more issues than what was told about it. <laughs> and uh, breaking down. Cutting, well, off. cutting off twice, yeah. going about 35 miles an hour. <clears throat> yeah. But anyway, I, I guess everybody has that experience at some point in their life. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it was definitely a, an adventure. It was an adventure. The countryside was really pretty. It was really nice yeah. out there. We saw some soybeans that were growing. We saw a sunflower field ready for harvest. Soybeans, never saw them in bloom before, but they're very pretty. They were white and pink flowers. It was yeah. really pretty. Yeah, we would, if you guys, uh, whoever's listening, if you know where we can get soybeans that are not GMO, that would be really good. Just please comment. Yeah, comment on a website where you get them from. Yeah, because we would like to make some tofu and uh, try soy sauce mm -hmm. and some things like that. Make our own soy sauce. <laughs> that yeah. sounds like fun. Well, we're going to hop into the news today. Uh, first one we got out breaking news is FBI and De uh, Department of Homeland Security warned threats to federal law enforcement have spiked since the Mar-a-Lago search. So since what happened with the Trump search that people aren't happy about it, obviously, like who would be happy about a former president being raided like that? Yeah. And I think it extends to, uh, beyond Trump because this shows what the power that they're building just for no reason at all. Yeah. And it, if it's toward a former president, how much more would it be toward the common people? Yeah, they know. And at least he has resources to fight it. But they feel, they feel like they can get away with it even still, right? Yeah, it's, it, I, it makes you wonder what they're trying to provoke. Because <clears throat> they didn't have that type of evidence. They were speculating the whole time. Mm -hmm. They couldn't be specific. They're supposed to be specific with their warrant. Yeah. They're supposed to be innocent until proven guilty. And it's not like he was refusing to cooperate with them. Yeah. He, uh, those things. It feels like they, they, the releases they give try to match whatever information has been kind of found out so that they can control the story and say, well, they try to remove the the word raid. It shows you how much they've manipulated just words. They originally, CNN <laughs> originally used the word raid, and uh, they switched it after the other. Uh, was I think it CNN it was, or I New York Times? I can't. It might have been New York Times because Tim was talking about yeah. it. Tim on Tim Cast. If, yeah. if you watch her stuff, he's a news guy. He does a lot of news stuff. I mean, when you have thirty officers raiding your home, I would call that a raid. Yeah, I would too. I mean, it's very clear what that was. It was political assassination, right? Yeah, it's an attempt at it. And that, I mean, again, they didn't do this stuff to Hillary Clinton. She obviously did something wrong. Yes. She purposely destroyed um, emails that really should have been against the law for her to do. Destroying yeah. evidence. Yeah, and she had classified document, documents right. on that server. And now we find out they took his passports. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to prevent him to, from being able to leave. So this is like, I don't know what <sighs> games afoot here. But there's apparently been claims from the FBI that they didn't take his passports, but then Trump released the email saying where they, you know, him requested. The sealed warrant. Yeah. You're talking about when they unsealed the warrant? Something like that. Yeah. Or no, the FBI responded. I saw something when I was looking for it. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I haven't um, been up to date on it like you have just now, but... I'm just thinking that this is um, for different reasons. What they're doing this for is different reasons. And it it goes even to the extent of causing more division in our country and showing us how much power they have over everyone, using Trump as a, an example because a lot of people want to rely on him to drain the swamp again. Yes. You know, he didn't do it the first time. I know. Go ahead. Because I'm guessing that things were more entangled and harder to deal with 
once he got there, he was restricted. The power of that office is very restricted. I think now it's than about, it's ever been. From what I understand, from what I've heard of people, it's about the information that the president is given. When you get into the office, the briefings they give you, it's off of those briefings that you make decisions. So they control what's in those briefings and they control your well, I'm decisions. referring to draining the swamp. Yeah, I know. But like, as he, like, let's say he gets an office and says, I want to report on this department and like what their expenditures are and what's this, what's that, right? Which is under his purview as the executive. When they give him those briefings, they alter those briefings to make it look a certain way as if they're efficient. They're running like they need to. You get what I'm saying? I do, but he already knew the corrupt the corrupt individuals there that he kept still kept there. He did. And it is his fault for the advisors he chose. Well, I don't think Trump should, should trust anyone, um, you know, as far as he can see them. And that, I mean, that could have been the reason. I thought it was at least the reason when he first kept those people around him, but what, still. What, like, throughout history, what's the sign of a great leader? The advisors they choose to have around him. Or if you were a great king and you have great advisors and you have a child and your child has those advisors, he will surely be a great king also. Yeah. I mean, if, if he listens to their advice. Right. And someone like that would be, I would say... You know, just people that we know, Tulsi Gabbard, uh, DeSantis, Paul, uh, Rand Paul, Ron Paul, you know, a lot of these people who have been uh, smeared all over the place. Yes. But we've heard what they've had to say and we under we, see, we know their backgrounds. Yes. And what they've tried to do for the people despite being attacked. Well, so like those are the advisors. If I, if I were him, I would seek advisors with those characteristics that these people show. Yeah. Yeah, those characteristics is yeah. the way I'm putting it because there's been so many people on the left that, you know, turned out opposite of what they portrayed. And now I think we're going through that phase with a lot of Republicans. Yeah, don't trust a lawyer. No. Don't trust. Don't politician. trust. I mean, I, not not to say all lawyers are bad. Uh, just my experience with lawyers is they're very arrogant. They think they're better than everyone. And they don't. You pay them and they... A lot of them won't even do what they say they're going to do. No, they won't. And these people end up being judges and politicians. So, I mean, there's a reason why we don't trust politicians, and it's because of their background. Yeah, I mean, literally, their, their job is to try to tell you what you want to hear to get elected. It's not actually about doing anything. No. You know, at the end of the day, it's yeah. pretty crazy. I mean, the state of oversight has gotten so little, um, so bad, right? Like we're talking about oversight over political offices, even our food oversight is is falling under the wayside. Something like thirteen thousand pounds of frozen pizza are perhaps tainted with metal, and it's like almost every you know couple candy formula, this and what we just read about the Tylenol being uh, there's they're claiming well there's a claim right now going on where pregnant women who take Tylenol. <clears throat> and can end up having kids with autism or ADHD. Yeah. A lot of kids do have ADHD. This has become a lot more prevalent in these times. Yeah. But what did they tell – what did they give you? When you take your – your child gets immediately vaccinated, what do they give them right away? Tunnel. And what has been in courts in the past few decades, you know, being like the autism relation to vaccines. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like – how do you know exactly where it's coming from? Because they don't really have any proper clinical trials to like study these these outcomes. They can't separate it because of the in, the inability, uh, I guess, because of the heavy reliance on the pharmaceutical industry. But to get back to the food stuff, like we see food recalls all the time, right? All the time. I mean, it's it is not strange, like you said, with the candy. There was a similar thing that happened with gummy candies, like a bunch of them, and it was similar, like metal shavings in them, right? So that comes from a not not maintaining the machines properly, friction between the machines making metal shavings I mean, produced. Should, I mean, are, is any of this stuff coming from China still? Um, No, this one's based out of Chicago. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. It is based out of Chicago. They haven't um, responded you know, to any of the questions so far immediately. I, what It seems to me it's like improper machine maintenance. 
And when you have anything, when you have metal fragments of anything in any kind of manufactured good, there's a lot of moving parts in producing this food. Those uh, pistons or, you know, control arms, all it takes is a little bit of friction or uh, something being warped, and then you got metal shavings. Well, I mean, with all the recalls, you might be right on that. I mean, it's hard. It's hard for me personally to see it as just a coincidence when you have all these food suppliers just all of a sudden. I mean, it's obvious that we're going to go into a food shortage. We also right. we also can't forget what happened with the uh, before we get to the food shortage. We can't forget that during the pandemic, we had the hugest amount of people quitting their jobs, and now the newest influx of employees. So. Probably most of the people working in these places don't have experience. I'm sure that does have an impact on it. But as you were saying about the food shortages coming up. Yeah, people, you guys need it. It's not too late to start a fall garden or a mm. harvest for fall and winter. <clears throat> I would I would definitely go for beans. Yeah. The, I yeah, because like you can store those. Potatoes. Beans and potatoes for the most part. Um, I mean, if you have room to grow enough grain to enjoy some of that during the winter, I would do that. But your squashes, your gourds, things like that, you know, the edible ones, I wouldn't rely on, I wouldn't rely on companies right now. For no, food. I, I wouldn't, if you want a pizza, make your own at home a little bit, you know, yeah. might be a little more time consuming, but at least you know that, you know, <clears> have, <throat> you know what's in it. Yeah. You can have a little bit more control over, over those things. Yeah, you need to learn how to produce your own food at this point because we can't trust the government. No, you we can't. really can't. Especially processed foods. They're the most most likely. Or big corporations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, general process, like to take and process foods for frozen foods, at like a grocery store, it takes big companies, it takes a lot of hands on it. It's a lot of room for failure. There is, um, especially when you have. Like you were saying, um, unreliable employees. And if you ever, I think anybody um, can realize that certain generations uh, don't really do well with working. No, they, there is not a general work ethic anymore in America like there used to be. It's more sporadic. It's not, you know, consistent. Yeah, there's people in younger the younger generation that, that do have a work ethic, but it's nowhere near like what it used to be, where like 80%, 90% of the population were pretty dedicated and took pride in whatever they did. Didn't matter if they were just putting wheels on a car or, you know, designing rockets from the top bottom. They were they were dedicated in what they did. Yeah. I mean, you would think we went from generations, I mean, I can remember generations of illiterate people. They were older, but they had a strong skill set. Then I remember seeing these people being phased out of their jobs because of lack of college education. And they ended up being jobless, even though they were masters of their craft, to seeing people who are getting the best of educate, education, yeah. right? The best education offered and doing nothing with it. No, just getting like a photography degree or getting... Or a philosophy degree or... Or even getting yeah. an aerospace degree, but they're not being jobs available yes. for that. Yes, you know, yes. I almost fell for that. Getting these high-end um, sci uh, science and engineering, STEM-based stem, STEM -based degrees, you know, there's not jobs available for them like you would think, unless you're from, you know, one of the top, top, top schools. Could you have an option of getting jobs in that? Yeah, so I'm just like... They're kind of like our Bill of Rights and Constitution that we were talking about. At the end of the day, it's just a piece of paper. Yeah, just like and your degrees. Just like the degrees. At the end of the at the end of the day, they're just a piece of paper unless you're putting those skills into practice and actually being productive with them. It's just a piece of paper at the end of the day. Yeah. So it's funny. I'm clicking through this gifts, and that's Chris Christie, right? Yeah. From New Jersey. Uh, I got this article pulled up from the Daily Wire. Journalists and liars who met with Julian Assange sued CIA Mike Pompeo. And I, I don't know why I thought Chris Christie when I was thinking that. They're a similar look. They have a similar look. I saw his face. And I knew that was Chris Christie. And for some reason, I thought this article had it. But it's not. It's Mike yeah. Pompeo. But forgive me, for that. forgive me for that, you guys. This is crazy. Julian Assange, these are journalists that met with them, lawyers, and they had their communications viewed by the CIA and Mike Pompeo. So now they're uh, suing 
um, over that over that spot. And see, this is why I, I what I don't understand either. Why did Trump not help Julian Assange, um, Edward Snowden? I mean, why was there him. no help for these guys? None, 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 none whatsoever. See, I'm, I'm just so confused by everything that's going on. You know, cause... Um, with because the things he could have done when he was in office, he could have let these two guys, you know, come back safely and then, you know, helped them get their stories out to go ahead and persecute or prosecute the ones who are corrupted. And they, those would have been two strong allies and witnesses yeah. for him to drain that swamp. But the reality is, is uh, there was an interview with Julian Assange before, like, you know, before the 2016 election. And they're like, well, why aren't you releasing, you know, things about what Trump's doing? He's like, I have stuff, but I'm honestly more worried about Hillary Clinton than I am about Trump. So I think the reason Trump didn't do anything is that Julian probably has things on Trump, too. It's just like... Everybody's got skeletons in their closets. Like, no matter what you may think of Trump, he's a businessman that's operated in New York and New Jersey. And see, that's, I think that that is the wrong decision on his part to make. Because if you're going to be transparent with the people, at least uh, approach the people like you are being candid and transparent, then you need to be candid and transparent. Right? Yeah. I mean, what could he have possibly had on him? He said he was more worried about Clinton, Hillary Clinton. But I mean that. Oh my gosh! Why? Why do we have these these limited choices to make? Shouldn't it be what the people want? It should. I think so. But it's like there's obviously a control in the background that's moving people and moving uh, positions in place and persecuting, like prosecuting people, persecuting people that are standing up against that system. I mean, there is no denying that. I don't know if people understand um, Jesuit training and schooling and all that. You know, I don't know how many people really can correlate. This is a crazy story. Certain events. So um, Tim was talking about this. This this will probably be on our, our front line for the stuff. I forgot. I totally forgot about this. Bill Clinton's special advisor who let Jeffrey Epstein into the White House seven times and flew on Lita Express dies at 59. They are ruling it a suicide. He was found with an extension cord around his neck and shotgun um, wound to the chest. He had a, the, let me repeat that again, he, with an extension cord hanging from a tree and a shotgun wound to the chest and they're ruling it a suicide. Okay, people, I think at this point you can understand that they don't really care about our opinions or what we know and don't know about them. They're doing whatever they want to do. It's obvious, it's obvious that power, there's there's a an elitist power in control of our country. And for this kind of thing to be in the open, and everybody with the common sense to know that that is not what they're claiming it to be. It's like they're, it's the whole again, the whole thing again about the dystopian mindset of two plus two equals five they're telling you they're you see the evidence yeah but they're telling you what it is and then it's up to you whether you believe that or not just because it's in the news does not mean you believe it just like when the doctor tells you to take Tylenol you know are they doing it because they're worried about you and they know their stuff and did their research or is it is because they're getting paid you know it's just like this whole corrupted world we live in that you have to start thinking critically don't believe headlines don't believe anything that you see for face no. face value understand that everything that you're told is a lie exactly see through the deception see through the mist that they put in front of your eyes you know there's a a, a book series a young fiction book series called percy jackson and uh, yeah, I, think the, I think everybody's familiar with Percy Jackson. Yeah, if you're not, you know, you don't have to read it, but there's a concept of like, there's things, there's the ancient Greek creatures around and stuff, and the reason everybody can't see it is a, a mist. It's like their like own willingness to, not to see it, and that's a little bit of like how people are with the news. 
And so, like, there's this myth that everybody's choosing to ignore the things that are going on instead of paying attention. If they just open their eyes, they'd see through that fog. It doesn't matter how they try to manipulate the headlines. If you start reading news, you start reading the articles, you'll see the 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 facts that are the same. Yeah, but you know what? Most people want now. I think of people, um, you know, the Mad World. It's a Mad World video where everybody's on their phone and walking into a pothole or walking off of a cliff. And there's just like this little kid that goes around wondering what's going on. It's just an innocent little child wondering what's going on. Yeah. Watching everybody go through this. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I'm the kid watching everybody go through this well, face glued to phone. Well, people are, are now bound to laws in those wor- in that world, that fake world too. There's an article, it's funny that you mentioned it about the social media stuff. There's a man in the UK that he had a, a three week prison. It was a three week or eight week, and he was fined a couple thousand euros. Um, he gets to community service or what, something. What did he do? He posted apparently a racist or and hateful post about three members of the UK or English uh, England soccer team that missed their penalty shots. Now I don't know what he posted, and if it was whatever it was, and it's not good. But it's like, should people face jail time for words, right? Like it's no, because you know where that money's going. It's just going in the government's pockets. Yeah, they're, now they're making money off of your freedom of speech. So people are choosing to engage into this this system and these screens in front of their eyes, and now they're being bound by laws that are like nonsensical. Like, I like got outside and I'm talking. I can say these things and not get arrested, and not get a fine. But because you say them on a network or say them on the communication. I mean, they're listening to you on the phone. Yes, so it'll be just be. Yeah. They already said, oh, you know what? I read an article two days ago said that they're using AI to track down hate speech. I believe it. I believe it. They try to find the coded languages or whatever that might be used. I mean, as- we already know that advertisements come up and articles come up on our phone just from us talking about it and there was one time when i was thinking about something it came up on the phone yeah yeah i mean it's weird it can happen that way and i think when the thinking thing i don't think you're gonna read our thoughts or anything like that i just think that it's so intelligent that because of five the like five prior decisions that we made it knows that more than 98 percent likely that you've made this sixth decision in your mind to have this thought. It's not. It wasn't. It's like, completely, completely. What was I it? don't look up Disney stuff. Yes. It was Pinocchio. Yeah. And it was a conversation we had, and it just reminded me of um, Pinocchio and that uh, part of the uh, movie where he wants to find out what it's like to be free. He's tempted by the, the you know, the smooth talkers. And he goes and gets to do whatever he wants to. But he finds out it's not really what it's cut out to be. When when did you get that ad for the Pinocchio thing? That same day. When was this? It was a few weeks ago. A few weeks ago? Was not it before? Two weeks ago. Because I watched a trailer for Pinocchio on Amazon. <laughs> when we're movies. So I'm wondering if that oh, has... That probably coincidence. Oh my gosh. But it's weird, right? Because like, I didn't tell you for a reason. I was like, I something just came up and I, I just thought about it for a second. But you and me are very closely linked and I probably thought about it and then like you picked up on it. Oh my gosh, that's too funny. Yeah, I think... All well, the coincidences do happen. Yeah, it does. I mean... In not, a way. There, I mean, that's, that's the whole thing, right? But they're making... I think what made me feel like that is because they're making claims that AI can read your mind. Like, by certain facial expressions and things like that. Not necessarily. Well, there's... The, the, I remember, like, the thing you showed me, I know what you're referencing, and they were saying, like... Even off of slight, tiny facial movements, it can tell what thoughts you have on your mind. Well, it's the way, I guess, they're reading some type of, um, it's a combination of things. Yeah. And without the article, I don't want to just blurt off a bunch of stuff, but it was pretty in-depth about it. There, there are, They do have those drone headbands that you can make it fly up and down, left and right, with your thoughts. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know they have... Teenagers doing that in school when they're robot robotics class. No, 
So, I mean, they, it's something to do with the electronic um, activity of your mind that yeah. the AI can read through cameras and sound. Yeah. I mean, I guess whatever the direct radiation of thought is, it has to be like against the head to pick it up. It may be the body heat and uh, several other factors. Right? I mean, it could be. I, without doing an in depth research on Alec to and having it in front of me, I'm sure I wouldn't be able to reiterate it properly. Yeah, yeah but, I can understand that. It's, it's just really interesting to think about uh, the weird, weird story that you showed me today about that guy that drove through a fundraiser uh, crowd, right? There were a crowd that was fundraising, and then he drove over. He doesn't look very normal to me. No. He looks like his eyes indicate slight autism. Yeah, I could probably, I could understand that. He said it was extremely frustrated, apparently. That's why he did what he did. And we, we're not going to go into everything he did, but he ran over people at a fundraiser thing. And then and he ended up murdering his own mother. Yeah, yes, and then went home and murdered his own mother in a very gruesome way. And this is um, someone who became very frustrated. And I don't know if, we all become very frustrated and to a point, and I think men more so than women as far as being physically destructive. Everybody has their point of no return when it comes to anger. Yes. And, um, I mean, I have to say it, without Jesus, you're never going to control it. No. You're not going to because you're kind of like a time bomb waiting to go off. Yeah, you truly are. It just builds up inside because there's nothing that really, truly relieves the pressure. Yeah, you just got to, I mean, I would suggest anybody that has an anger problem to seek the Lord. I think everybody should seek the Lord anyway, but um, the way media is presented to us, the way people act in society now, um, there is no grace and mercy. And then when you push, even when you push a wild animal or any animal into a corner, they're going to lash out at you. So, yeah. I mean, it might not be the case for every angry situation, but in my lifetime, I've seen more physical altercation from someone being provoked so intensely that they feel like they have no choice but to react. Yeah, I mean, that's why being genuinely, genuine, genuinely and generally kind a courteous, yeah. not trying to be an inconvenience for others, because you don't know what might set somebody off one day. Yeah. Like, the fact that you didn't hold the door open behind you, or that you went in front of somebody. Well, like the other day, when the guy just turned his wash windshield wipers, the you know, the liquid to clean the windshield off, and he ends up getting killed. Yeah. Because water just splashed on the car, I guess, behind him. So, I mean... <laughs> It's just going to get worse, guys, because we do live in those times. Yeah, we do. The love of men will grow cold. Inequity will, inequity will grow abound. Just please reach out to Jesus. If, you're, if you feel hopeless, instead of hurting anyone, if you feel despair, if you feel anger, if you feel like you just want to hurt people, please reach out to Jesus first. Amen. Amen. And speaking of the good news... I got this article right here. Researchers changed the blood type of kidney and transplant breakthrough. So now they'll be able to make kidneys, go, we know, be able to be transplanted in more variety of people. How are they doing that? Um, I think it's by influence of gene the genetics, right? Uh, let's see. Da -da 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 -da. Oh! Machine, a device that connects with the human kidney to pass oxygenated blood through the organ to better preserve it for future use. So they use a particular enzyme that removed the blood type markers that line the blood vessels of the kidney, which led to the organ being converted to type O. So they didn't even genetically um, modify it to the organ and then pumped B-type human kidneys. Uh, they, they took B-type human kidneys, pumping the enzyme through the organ using their perfusion machine, 
we saw in a matter of just a few hours that they had converted a B-type kidney into O-type. That's very interesting. It's feasible, um, but it's not been successful yet, right? No, they did it. Did they? Yeah. They just, they did it. They, they converted one. Now it has to be, I guess, approved for transplant, right? Because the main part of what the, I mean, they'll probably still have to take transplant medicines, but a large part of the issue is matching blood types for a lot of organ transplants. It's, uh, I mean, I'm not a big fan of transplants. You know, we, we know some scripture that, that talks against, you know, mixing a blood or exchanging a blood between one another. Uh, it's, it's a hard thing, but... You know, if a person ends up getting something like that and then they live long enough and then they know Jesus after that and they didn't know him before. Yeah, I don't think I'd want a transplant. Not me personally, no. Yeah. But uh, I wouldn't condemn anybody for... No, that would be their choice. Yeah. But um, I used to be a donor. And my great-grandfather was a donor. But um, I think my dad is too. But I, I just don't want to do that. Because when you live... This is before when I was a complete patriot. Yeah. So patriotic. You know, come from a military family background. And um, just didn't think our government could do that much wrong. Mm -hmm. And trusted, you know, professionals, basically, that were educated. I thought that professionals in the medical field were dedicated to healing people. You know, like making their lives better. And as I've gotten older, I realized... That's not how it is. It's all about the green. Yeah, it's all about the money, money yeah. making racket. Yeah, and I just don't trust anybody that's greedy. No, you can't because they're always going to put their profit, you know, before above their human life. Of course. And so I imagine, I started imagining. Well, if I got in a car accident and they had a chance to help me live or make a half a million dollars off my organs, I don't know what they would choose. Yeah, no. You know, so it made me rethink things, and I was like, you know what. I don't think I want to do this anymore. No. So, um, yeah, no. <laughs> I mean, it's good to have a kind heart to want to help people, you know. You know, but with the society we have, we live in now, takes advantage of that. It does. So there's like this moderation where we do give freely, but you have to be wise. Wise as serpent is a dog. Yeah. And it's very. And you important. want to make sure not they're not doing nefarious things with your your body tissue and your blood and all this stuff. Like they make you feel like it's such a routine thing to go in and get all these tests done. But the whole time they want to, first of all, know you have, if you have insurance, if you have insurance, Oh, they see the green, right? They're yeah. going to do every test possible. If you don't have insurance, it's like, well, we really can't do much for you today. Take two Advil and come back if you have an emergency. <laughs> see, here's some antibiotics. Right. Here's some, you know, here's some low strength antibiotics. Yeah, and then not only are they making money off the insurance, right? They're also selling the, the information. information. Yeah. You your can, DNA and everything. Yeah, or just your your statistics. Yeah. Just even your statistics. Like, either, like they are selling your DNA. Yeah, like the HEPA form is really just to be a piece of paper at the end of the day. Yeah. It's another piece of paper at the end. They, you're bound to it, but they're not. Because who else is taking weight consistently, blood pressure, all these these things that corporations that would love to know how to sell health products and individuals want, want that information. Yeah. So oh, they, your medication caused these side effects. Well, we can now make more medication for those side effects, but oh my gosh, this, these are going to cause more side effects. Well, wow, we're going to get rich off of this. Well, uh, yeah. Or if you know, you have a lot <laughs> so more, ridiculous. Of, or if you have a lot more obese people in certain regions and you're getting that information from family practitioners, or large hospital systems, you know who to market your diabetes medication to. That's easy. Just get data from the food companies to see where they sell the most junk at. That's true, too. That's I mean, true. you got your demographic for diabetes. Yeah. Yeah, true. Right. I always sell more sodas and junk food to this area. Yeah. And yeah, these people are... Such low income, they're not going to ever be able to find us in court. We should just send all our diabetes medicine to Wisconsin. That seems a safe bet. <laughs> oh my goodness. 
Well, we're hoping to educate people, though, yeah, on yeah. healthy living. And- because it's important, like we were showing you in the frozen food article, you don't know what kind of, even at your fast food restaurants, all that food is brought in on trucks, usually from a main processing plant, and it's there's a lot of hands on it. If you have your hands on your food and you're the only one touching it, you feel a bit more secure in what you're eating. Because you never, you never know again with the yeah. employees or whatever. Right. And or we- even if they change their grease. That's a, that's the thing. Like a restaurant, how often they change their grease? A restaurant is always going to use the cheapest that they can to maximize profit. Yes. It's always going to be a corporation mindset. Even down to the smaller businesses, they tend to think that way now because yeah. they want to model themselves out of something, somebody more successful than they are. Yeah, they use the cheapest oils that cause you to get yeah. eczema and rashes and all these like yeah. acne and you know. Just I know I sound rough, but I have really bad allergies and. I haven't been able to get like um, the golden run has it come in yet. That usually helps me a lot. Yeah, and then the good night's sleep definitely not not helping. Not getting enough sleep. Yeah, I, I yes, <laughs> I'm gonna go into that. But yeah. <laughs> well, we thank you guys for joining us, and we appreciate you sticking with us this long. Uh, if you haven't, hit that like button. Uh, if you haven't, hit that subscribe button. Comment if you have anything else to say. Or have the, any prayer requests. The most important thing I want you to do, if you haven't done this, is to ask Jesus Christ to come into your life. If you haven't done that yet, I know that will make the biggest difference and bring you the most joy more than any social media will. We thank you for joining us, and we'd like you to have a blessed day. Bye. Bye.